to give you some scriptural support today for King James Video Ministries' existence. Um, what is the scripture? Can you please give us some scripture proving that internet ministry from a personal private house is legitimate and whatever else? Well, obviously, anybody with any brains would realize that there are no such things as internet back in the first century. Sure, absolutely. But uh, there were no cars either. There's no electricity. There's no refrigeration. There's no Bibles that look like this. I mean, you can get nutty and just simply say that uh, you have to reject anything that's not in the Bible. Well, uh, you have a lot of problems then. Okay, go live in a cave or something or under a rock. All right. Um, the, but the real debate here is not so much internet ministry. It's doing things from home, home church type of things versus the organized religion church building. That's the real issue here. And see, this is legitimate, even though it's not based in scripture, but this is somehow not legitimate. The little house here. All right. But uh, do you have any scripture that proves that you should be doing things from home and whatever else? Um, yes, actually I do. The uh, verses that prove that what I do for a living is perfectly fine, according to the scriptures. Acts chapter 28, verse 30 and 31. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired temple. First Baptist Church. Uh, no, uh, it doesn't say temple. For, uh, two whole years in his own hired church building. Storefront, intending to move to a church, but no, his own hired house. You see? You know what a house is? I hope you do. And received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. Let's dissect these two verses here, and I'll show you the proof of what I do and why God has blessed this ministry uh, exponentially more than I could have ever even dreamed of. Uh, this ministry has touched the lives of just thousands and thousands of people all around the world. Um, if I had had a church building someplace, and I had them offered to me in the past, if I had had a church building somewhere, I would not have affected the number of people that I have, you know, with the ministry. The ministry has, has changed the lives of a lot of people. But let's look at this. Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house. Okay. Now, I guess there are people out there that would say, well, technically, you've been doing this King James Video Ministries thing from a home for more than two years, so there you're wrong or something. You know, never underestimate the stupidity of my enemies. Okay, I've learned that over the years. Sometimes I think they wouldn't be dumb enough to come up with this argument, and then they do, and you know, then I, you know, they, they say never argue with an idiot because they'll take you down to their level and then they beat you with experience. A lot of truth in that one. <laughs> okay. Um, obviously, there's no limit to how long you could minister uh, from your own hired house. Okay. Your own house that you own, in other words. Um, that's what's basically going on there. Paul is in a private residence where he is teaching people the word of God. All right. Now, Paul obviously didn't have the internet back then. Again, I get it, sure, but he's communicating to churches. That's what all the letters are about, the Pauline epistles. He's writing to different churches, different groups of people, in other words. That's what churches means. It doesn't mean this. That's not a church. That's a pagan satanic temple, All right, which I'll show you in an upcoming video. But he's there for two years uh, in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him. Um, again, I receive all that come in unto me. Uh, you know, we don't videotape people that come and visit, you know, people that come and visit us. We've had that happen a number of times. We're not against meeting with people. Again, this isn't some kind of a thing. King James Video Ministries is not a, a fellowship type of a thing and whatever else. And, and somehow we don't ever want to meet with anybody in person that somebody comes up and says, hey, are you Brother Brian or whatever? And I, I scream and run away or something. No, we love to fellowship with people. More of that coming in the future. Absolutely. But what we are against, radically against, is the concept of the church building. All right? More scripture on that here in a little while. But uh, received all that came in unto him. Again, most of my preaching down through the years has been sermon requests. It isn't just things that the Lord places on my heart. That does happen sometimes. But I've had people say, do you have a sermon on this? Or what are your thoughts on that? Or whatever else. I get sermon suggestions from men, from women from people all over the, the world, different ethnicities, different, you know, whatever. I love that, right? That's what this ministry is all about. 
preaching the kingdom of God, peace, joy, righteousness. I think Romans 14 talks about that. And teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ. I teach about the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, again, what are my enemies? My enemies just stalk me. That's all they do. They have no ministry. God doesn't reveal anything to them. They just make hundreds and hundreds of videos against me and then claim I don't have a real ministry because I don't have one of them. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm not part of one of these. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I could get a church building and I could raise a following uh, easily. But there's a reason I reject it, which I'll be saying in the next video. But, um, uh, and here's the, here's the big point here, verse 31. You know, teaching, the things, teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, I know what I believe. In other words, I'm not, I'm not a, uh, I don't preach with dissimulation. I'm not a hypocrite. I do preach what I believe and I've put into practice. I'm not perfect. I don't teach sinless perfection. Again, let me say that. No man forbidding him. Okay, now that's the key po point to this whole thing. No man forbidding him. Um, when you get out on your own and the Lord says, okay, I want, he calls you into the ministry, you are supposed to follow Paul's example. What did Paul do? Okay, Paul said, be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Christ Jesus, I think, is how the verse goes. If I'm supposed to follow Paul's example, then me doing what I'm doing right now lines up with these two verses of Scripture. You see, for years and years and years, I went to these. Baptist church after Baptist church after Baptist church, and it wasn't just I'm there one Sunday and then I leave. There was one the one time I went to, and it was really, really, really bizarre, and I just kind of, okay, yeah, these people are really strange. I mean, it was weird, and I left. I didn't go back. But most of them, I would go there for a year or two, I would get to know the pastor. I would teach Sunday school. I would preach from the pulpit many times. Um, again, I've talked about that in other studies. Uh, but here's the point. I never found one church where I was given just total freedom to preach whatever. I was told, take it easy on the Catholics. Don't be too hard on the new versions. Take it easy on this. Take it easy on that. You know, Don't get too radical with this or radical with that. And why? Because they were afraid that they were going to lose their church building if a radical nut like me went off too much on some issue. All right? I was forbidden from speaking the truth that the Lord was revealing to me. And it wasn't just some radical rant either, some angry rant. I was going to stand up there and scream and yell about Catholics or Satanists or something or blood-drinking cannibals, which technically they are. But uh, that's not the case. I'm not even allowed to speak about Catholicism because there's some Catholic people that might show up for this end time seminar thing, you know, literally the last Baptist church I went to, and um, don't talk about Catholicism, is what I was told. I had a man forbidding me. Here, man forbid me from preaching. But when the Lord gave us our own place and said, okay, King James Video Ministries needs to be about putting out videos and things, and first I started with DVDs, then I went to online preaching. Um, it was still a fairly new thing way back in 2009 is really when I got into it. But I started preaching from my own hired house. And you know what? No man forbidding me. Lord put something on my heart, I'll come out with it. You know that if you're familiar with this ministry. I don't hold back. I don't, uh, I'm not afraid to name names or, or whatever. Um, so you want scripture for what I do? Online ministry? From my own home, right there it is. Acts chapter 28, verses 30 and 31. And I recommend that you do it as well out there. You preach the Word of God. If the Lord lays something on your heart, don't say, well, I have to find an older pastor someplace, a, a man of God, and get his permission before I can... No, there's one mediator between man and God, the man Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ is your mediator, Christian man. All right? Uh, if the Lord places something on your heart, bring it out, right? See, that's what these people here don't like because these people have an image, literally an image to Baal, their little uh, phallic symbol here called a steeple, but <clears throat> they have an image that they worry about. They come in with their little suit and tie on and they, you know, the Bible, you know, you tuck it under your arm a certain way and you just kind of go in and, oh, hello, brother, and oh, it's good, good to see you again, sister, and, and you know, the whole thing, and I did that stuff. 
suit and tie the whole deal, you know, and, and, and just the professional professionalism and, and, you know, you got to give a good homily up there. I, I mean, sermon, uh, Greek oration is what homilies are. Um, but you, you got to do all these things and you don't get too controversial and you, you learn how to, to pitch your voice just right. Friends, if we only loved God so much that, you know, pass around the offering plates now. How do I do? You know, mm -hmm. uh, oh, by the way, your offering, uh, since this is a 501c3 structure right here under IRS codes, um, you can write that off on your taxes. So you get money. When you give money to the Lord, you get money back. See how that works? Um, nice little scam that these people have going here. But see, that's why they're afraid of crazies like me. That's why these people don't want to even say my name for the most part, you know, because Denlinger is just too controversial. No man for betting him. Yeah. Let me show you two other scriptures here. Colossians chapter four. Well, you need to be part of a local assembly. You need to be part of a good New Testament local church, whatever in the world that thing is. I've yet to see the term local church in my New Testament. So, but you got to find a good New Testament local church. Okay. Colossians chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. All my state shall Tychicus declare unto you, who is a beloved brother and a faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that he, may, that he might know your estate and comfort your hearts, with Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you. They shall make known unto you all things which are done here, Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, saluteth you, and Marcus, sister's son to Barnabas, touching whom ye receive commandments. If he come unto you, receive him. And Jesus, which is called Justice, who are of the circumcision, these only are my fellow workers under the kingdom of God, which have been a comfort unto me. I've talked about this many times over the years, but we'll continue here. I'll just uh, read a little bit more. Uh, verse well, we'll just jump down to, uh, it goes over a few more, looking at my notes here. Jump down to verse 15. Salute the brethren which are in Laodicea and Nymphus and the church which is in his house. Okay. A um, little problem for you there if you're a church building height. But, but I want you to notice something. Okay. Verse 7, we have Tychicus. One. Church building people, can you count along with me? Uh, in verse 9, we have Onesimus. That's two. Verse 10, we have Aristarchus and Marcus. Verse 11, we have Jesus, which is called Justice. You ready, class? Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, you mean to tell me Paul only had five guys working with him? Doesn't sound like he was part of a very good uh, New Testament local church. Only five guys that were working with him? Hmm. These only are my fellow laborers. But you have 300 in normal attendance here and whatever and some people in Sunday school. Well, they used to be in normal attendance until the face mask coronavirus thing happened, you know. Uh, now we just, you know, have to tune in online uh, kind of like people have been doing over here and you've been mocking us over here for years and years and years when you're going to get a real church yeah well your real church got shut down by the government smarty pants you know <laughs> uh but it gets worse let's go to second timothy chapter four when you get a real church oh yeah second timothy chapter four verses nine through eleven do thy diligence to come shortly unto me, for Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Only Luke is with me. One. Luke 1. You understand? The last Baptist church that I left, um, because they were wicked, the last one I left, he told me, he said, 
you and your wife do not constitute church. I said, okay, um, how many more people do we have to have? He said, at least one more. Um, chapter and verse, please. So, so let me get this straight. Two is not a church, but three or more, that's a church. <laughs> okay. Um, well, then I guess Paul was uh, disqualified because he only had Luke with him. Only Luke is with me. Earlier he had five. Now only Luke is with him. But that, that's just ministry stuff because you see, Paul was always in church faithfully every Sunday. Every time the doors were open, Paul was there. Uh, chapter and verse. See, the whole thing is, you bunch of stupid papists out there, be you Baptist papist or Methodist papist or independent Bible or community or whatever kind of papist you are, um, you have no basis for your system in Scripture. And yet you hound those of us that follow the Scriptures. And you pretend that we somehow are wrong with God or something or our, our system is not is corrupt or whatever else. Uh, no, that's actually you that's like that. Okay, so uh, what's the basis for the ministry? Acts chapter 28, verses 30 through 31. Um, we do meet with people. Okay, that's fine. But God has called us into a ministry, a ministry that I can reach people in other countries, that I could never reach them on foot. There's no possible way I could go to, to Norway, to Sweden, to Germany, to the UK, to I mean, Canada is not real far from here, but I can't just travel all the time. That's just not possible. I can put out videos here on the internet from our home, our office. Oh, we're offended because you call it a ministry, head, ministry headquarters. Okay then, princess, put another name on it. Whatever. We're fighting the devil's system. That's why we call it our headquarters. All right? Not a big deal. You don't want to call it the ministry headquarters. We'll call it the home office of King James Video Ministries or the whatever. This is where we do things or whatever else, you know doesn't matter all right um so there you go but we're going to come back here in the next video and i'm going to give you three reasons why i will never have a church building ever for any reason okay so that's going to be it thank you for watching